Game over, man! Game over! Intel has suggested that the colonists on LV426 have all but disappeared, and only a minor trace signal remains. Luckily for you, you and a squad of three other marines are going to enter the compound and deal with the pervasive threat, if there is one at all. In the game, Aliens Bug Hunt. It plays two to four players, it takes about a half an hour to 45 minutes to play, and is for ages 17 and up. As you gather a named character from one of the most popular franchised alien movies, as well as some grunts, you're going to go into the compound, you'll be flipping over tiles, attempting to defeat aliens, solve objectives, and then after you've conquered all the objectives, get out of the compound before the alien menace destroys your team, and escape with your life. Can you do it? Let's find out down below I'll show you what comes in the game how it plays and then we'll talk about my review welcome Marines to LV 426 and we'll set up the game aliens bug hunt it is a two to four player game but regardless the number of players you're playing with you're going to have all the boards here and use all the characters and of course you're going to have different rule books in this game so if you're playing four players give everybody out one you're playing two players give them out two and two and if you're playing three distribute how you feel each of the different players will read different rules and set up the game in their own way or be able to teach the game but lucky for you I'll explain most of the game here and right now go ahead and first deal out the character cards now there's a ton of different named characters and everybody's going to get one of them and some of them will actually allow you to get two like Ripley is going to let you get an additional named character along with herself and then you're gonna give everybody else out two grunts and you'll put them in this order this is the way I would suggest with this guy here is gonna take the first brunt of damage and then this one and then this one so you can set up however you would like. It's also going to have the player board with the sequence and whether your character is ready or whether it is depleted by being used for attacking. Put out all your character miniatures here on the hive tracking board. Place this token here at the one space. Put tracking cards here after shuffling them. These are all the aliens in the game. These are your breaches. You'll use these when you need to bust through the compound. This is going to be the tokens you'll use when your characters take damage up to their maximum armor. If they take any more, they'll flip these over. And if you reveal KIA, that means your character has been killed in action. Objective markers for when you complete these guys here. And of course, the backside means you've utilized them because certain objectives will give you certain ability in order to successfully accomplish certain things. So if, for instance, you want to activate this at any time, you can, and you can ready a character. So you can go from here to here by spending an objective. And you can only have three on this one specifically. These are all the tiles in the game. They're going to be the different compound tiles here. Make sure you shuffle them all up good and ready and place them down on the board. And then go ahead and take these mission cards, shuffle them up and deal out three so that you know how to win the game. Once you fill these guys up, you're going to leave the area here and you're going to return to the board. And if you do that, you win. The phase deck. The phase deck is who's going to decide who takes a turn, whether it be green, whether it be the aliens, whether it be red, yellow, and of course, blue. And then there's also a unique one. There's that one there. It lets you guys choose who gets to take an extra turn. You can set up this deck however you'd like, depending on the difficulty you want to set. I think it's at least four cards, but you can add more. Here's more. And these will also be used when this gets all the way to nine. Then you're going to bring it back down again. And that's pretty much the entire setup of the game. To begin the game, you're going to simply take this phase deck, shuffle it, and reveal a card based on the color you reveal as the person's turn that will be, be taking first. And in this case, you get, they get three points of movement and then an action. Movement one is you place a tile down and move into that sector. Movement two is you place another tile down and move into that sector. And then movement three. Very, very simple. Now, you can't go through these barriers unless you spend two points of movement or there's a breach there. And once you've used all your movement, you can now take an action. Or, of course, you can use less movement if you so wish. Another thing to note, too, is at the beginning of the game, if you want, you can go ahead and draw one of these tracking icons and put out aliens. In this case, we would put them out in the four and five area. And if you want to start off as your first game, you don't have to do that. So do you want to start off with aliens on the board? If so, flip over one of these guys and place some aliens down. And if not, you do not have to do that. After the character is done taking their movement, they now get to take an action. And their actions are going to range. Maybe they want to attack or shoot in the area they're in, as well as adjacent areas, and they can do that by depleting their marines. So green is all the way over here. Basically, if he wants to, he can spend these guys. That'll give him four bullets, and he can attack four baddies that are here 
or adjacent to him. And he'll roll them. If you get this symbol here, it dies. This, uh, these other two symbols, they'll either move towards him or they'll, or he'll, or, or the character will take damage, depending on if it's adjacent or not to the Marine. And then of course, you can also do something like breaching a barrier. So for instance, if I wanted to go from here and let's say there was a space like this, that's a, that's an area you can't get through. But if you breach it, you can now go through it. That, that's gonna cost you a single action as opposed to attacking. Another thing you can choose to do is capture an objective. So this character, let's say he just wants to go ahead and put a breach token here, because he knows he's probably gonna need one at some point. And then the next player is gonna get a chance to go. That's aliens. Aliens are simply move this up on the track. Pretty easy. If aliens ever get up to here, that means that you're going to trigger the alien phase. All aliens will attack, all aliens will move to an adjacent space closest to the character, and then after that, aliens are going to spawn. You flip over one of these guys here, and you're gonna place aliens on the board based on the symbols and the numbers. So there's gonna be symbols here, like this is a two, which means that you can put two aliens on this space, and if this thing says it's gonna be two, three, and four, let's say this was here, aliens would be spawned here. That's, it's pretty simple how aliens are spawn. And after you spawn aliens, you're just going to be done. Now remember, if you go all the way up to here, you're going to add one of these guys to the discard pile, making the game more challenging, making the aliens have more of a chance to go. And then you're going to put this back down on the hive track. Uh, let's go ahead and check out another card. So we did, we did green already. Let's do yellow now. So technically you wouldn't be able to do that, but yellow is going to get to go. So yellow can now choose to move in here. They'd have to actually take their action out because you have to deal with aliens. There's only certain ways in which you can get out of aliens. But if you attacked, you'd roll these guys. You would expend. That's two. These guys would actually pass away. Now, if these guys didn't exist there like I was talking about and I wanted to show you an objective. Well, let's go ahead and let's see. We'll do one. We'll place this here. Two, three. That would be your full movement. Then you got your objective. You're gonna place this guy here, signifying that there's an objective token there. And as your action, you can take the objective and place it on one of these guys here. And whenever you want, you can expend these these guys. There's a little X there, and you can do the objective. You can complete the you can complete the objective when you have three of these guys on here, regardless of whether they're flipped or not. But you get to do the bonus objective when you get this icon on there. Certain ones will give you more firepower, more movement, ready characters, all that good stuff. Last thing you can do on your turn is reload. So let's say that red took their full movement, one, two, and three. And let's say that they had all their guys expent. They had used them previously to attack aliens. You can spend an entire action to reload your characters and thusly you're going to have more firepower for the next round. And that's pretty much it. You'll go through this deck here. Once you do, you're gonna reshuffle it and you're gonna keep playing the game. These trackers will move up as the aliens spawn out. You'll be attempting to gather all these objective markers. And then when you do, you're gonna get all your Marines to leave the compound with all your objectives completed, and if you do so, you win. You lose the game if you have to put more of these into the deck and you can't, if one entire squad dies, and you win if, like I said, you move and escape. And that's pretty much it for the game Aliens Bug Hunt. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's got a little bit of like a, a Forbidden Island kind of vibe with a little bit of a Tiny Epic Defenders vibe. Let's come up and discuss the game. Jumping into the IP of Aliens, this is one of my favorite horror movies. It's right up there next to Evil Dead and The Thing. I've always enjoyed the Alien series and I like to see the board game implementations. This does a very good job of making you feel like you're Marines. You've got your own unique squad along with the other players and you're going into a compound attempting to complete objectives. It's very simple. Reloading is really easy, gathering objectives, even fighting is fairly simple. And then of course the aliens and how they function is easy as well. To determine whose turn it is, it's using this entire little deck here. And of course the game gets more challenging as you progress, the aliens start moving up and dealing with them gets to be a little more challenging as the game goes on as well. Also objectives, the fact that there's a ton of different missions you can partake in and the objectives you place on them you can use as beneficial things as well as your characters have their own unique objective or their own unique benefits as well. Like for instance, this guy here, Dietrich says uh, when he shoots, target two additional xenomorphs in your tile. That's really good. Even though he's only got one uh, one weapon, he actually can go ahead and attack two more. So it puts him up to three. And so they all have their own unique aspects to them. Even Ripley gets an extra bonus character. And whenever she's on a space with another platoon member, she does extra damage. So it shows how she works cooperatively. And as you can see that in the movie, it functions and makes sense. Another cool thing about the game too, which is also kind of a detriment, is the fact that you got four rule books. And when you're playing with four players, it makes it amazing because everybody gets their own little piece of the rules. You learn it about 10 minutes, everybody then explains it to everybody else, and it's a very quick uh, and simple uh, 
idea to what the game, you know, how you can make a game easy when you're reading. Problem is when you got one person, they have to read all four of them, then it gets a little more complex. But when you have two people, it's not so bad. I had Callie read two of the rule books, I read two of the rule books, and we figured out the game rather quickly. Uh, going through the compound reminds me a little bit of the uh, uh, Fires of Eidolon game. It reminds me of Forbidden Island. Like I said before, it reminds me of uh, uh, Tiny Epic Defenders, in which you're trying to be working cooperatively with your other Marines, getting through areas and completing objectives, and then getting the heck out of here because there's a ton of, ton of aliens that start spawning. This game, as its base stands, you need to add more aliens to the deck, especially when you're playing with certain missions, because it foregoes the ability for aliens to spawn. And if you get the right missions and you start on an easier mode, you might not see a whole lot of aliens throughout the game, which might be fine for a newer player, for people who are just getting into gaming and just like the idea of moving around the map. But if you want that intense combat where you're fighting the aliens, I strongly suggest you start by spawning aliens, add at least two, maybe even three more alien cards to the deck to make it a little more challenging. And the then you're going to have yourself a darn good time in the game. Another option too would be if you wanted to, you can go ahead and uh, determine based on the mission how many alien cards should be in the deck. That's one way I would specifically do it. But as it stands and it's normal on its normal state, you're, it's it's fairly easy to play. But like I said, it's also extremely easy to make the game more challenging. And in fact, on one of the backs of one of these rule books here, it explains how you can make the game a little harder. You can add one more Xenomorph phase card to the deck, or you can play an additional Xenomorph spawn step during the game setup. So you can spawn twice as opposed to once, or you can put an extra card in there. I guess it really just depends on the missions you get, but realistically, you should at least put one or two cards in the deck, or make sure you spawn, or spawn and put one card in. Something like that, so you get a little bit of a fight. Another thing to note too is when the game first starts and you spawn xenomorphs and then you flip over the phase deck and a xenomorph pops out that means that there's no there's nowhere for them to go because all your characters are still on that hive board or rtc track or whatever and so because of that you have to put the aliens on that board and it just pushes the the hive track up one which is good it makes the aliens uh, be ready to spawn again sooner but at the same time those aliens generally could have been like moving on the board and dealing with you in that case you, you don't have to deal with them so it has a little bit of that in it overall the combat is fun having the aliens function as dice is really cool and moving them onto the characters boards being able to kind of help your your different other like squads out in achieving these mission objectives is fun too. You might think that maybe you have a bunch of objectives at the start of the game and as you keep going throughout the game you only need that one more but it's somewhere tucked into the deck so you might take you a while to find it and stuff might start spawning and getting crazy and especially escaping the game. Once we added that little extra difficulty it was tough to escape the game and it felt good to have to like go around and do this and do that and roll the dice and then okay you can get through now but you have to actually make sure that your other friends get through you can't just leave by yourself unless you know for a fact your friends are going to make it out or your other squads and so you have to kind of balance that need to protect yourself that sort of like you know self-survival instinct and then of course enough to like save your friends reminds me of when i played dead by daylight and uh, i want to escape the killer right but I've got that guy hanging still on the hook and I have to go ahead and pick him up and, and drag him off and bring him back with me because I'll get more points if I do so. But at the same time, I just kind of really want to leave because then I don't lose. I have the opportunity of losing. In this game, you actually are forced into saving every squad because if you don't, you're basically kind of leaving a man behind and that's not a good thing. Uh, this is a really, really solid upper deck game. It's one of my personal favorites uh, in the series. Uh, like I said, as long as you add the extra difficulty, I like being able to blast. I like how it's very, very simple. I played with my, like, my cousins. They got it really quickly. They like cooperative games, and so this is a big one for them. It's going to see the tabletop. They hit the tabletop again. I think this is actually one of the very few, or if only maybe the only one that actually has miniatures, and the miniatures in the game are nice as well. And they have the little bases too, which I think is pretty cool. They've got some high quality little miniatures there. Overall, solid little game. Add that difficulty and you got a solid game, Alien Bug Hunt. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, it's down below, link in the description. Solid artwork, high quality components, 
What more can you ask for? Game over, man! Game over! That's the end of my review for the game Aliens Bug Hunt. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification button, and you can do receive and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. You can also go ahead and like, comment. You can go ahead and hit up our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, two giveaways right now. If you're interested, you can go ahead and pick those guys up, try and win those guys. Join our Discord, join our Patreon if you really want to support the channel, and you can also join our live stream every Wednesday, 6 30 p.m. PST. Our next week's gonna be our Halloween gig, and we're up in the quality of our stream and changing it up a little bit. So I think you guys will appreciate that. Give it a little more pizzazz. Alright, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to escaping LV426 with you next time.